Hello there. Welcome to another weekly hot seat training with me, Katie Adler, your trainer, because I want you to be comfortable in conversations anytime, anywhere, doing what you love, whether it's business, travel, meeting people, or the Olympics, or tourism. Many people are now brushing up on their English for a new business or for more pleasurable experiences with people from around the world. This training is getting you to speak non-stop for 30 seconds. Now, my system is a three-part system. Part one is a table it where you do three uh, parts for sentences for your answer plus plus. Part two is a mind map where you take parts of what you wrote in part one and make a mind map in part two. And then part three is what we're doing now. I do part three for this training because some people are advanced and some people are beginners. For my advanced people, you get a chance to practice, practice, practice. For my beginner people, you get a chance to practice, 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 and to know that this is the level that you are reaching for. So let's begin. Our topic is spelling bees. This topic was requested by Tanaka-san. Thank you, Tanaka-san, for requesting this topic. A couple of weeks ago in the newspaper and on Yahoo.com, I saw this topic. I believe the annual spelling bee in the United States was held. And so there was a story about it. It's very interesting. Spelling bees are part of schooling um, and spelling tests. Oh my goodness, the spelling tests never end. Elementary school, junior high school, high school, oh, university, they ended. <laughs> You're supposed to know how to spell. But I tell you what, I always make mistakes spelling and I think it's the internet. I always look for the red line and if there's a red line, I just click on that and my Grammarly helps me with spelling. English spelling is crazy anyway. If you study the history of English spelling, you will feel great about your ability to spell because there are no rules. All of these words were borrowed from different time periods and different languages. And finally, I don't know when the first dictionary was, but finally someone said, ah, we have to stop having different spellings for one word. We have to agree on one spelling. So finally, everything was unified. And you have the dictionaries in the world today. Although you still have British spellings and American spellings. So there you go. It's okay. <laughs> Do your best. But spelling bees. Um, spelling bees are interesting. And that's our topic. These are when you have a contest to find out who is the best speller. I don't think I ever won a spelling bee in my school, but I do have a spelling story that serves me and just fills me with pride every time that I think about it. Now, I think probably for you, no matter what your language is, uh, most of my target audience is Japanese, are, are Japanese learners, because that's where I am. I'm in Japan. Uh, probably kanji. You probably had kanji tests all the time. It's the same thing, you know. <laughs> All right. So, spelling bees. We're going to do a measure, 30 seconds, to see what's backwards. 30 seconds to see how you do. And then you'll listen to me and then respond to me. But let's just see how you are at talking about the topic of spelling bees. Are you ready? Spelling bees, what do you know?
Okay, great. Now, one hint, you know, when you're talking about something, you don't have to stay narrowly on spelling bees. You could start with, well, I don't know very much about spelling bees, but I do remember when I was a student, you know, having to study kanji all the time. So this is what I'm teaching you, is how to start with the topic and then move it into something you're comfortable talking about. It's a branch. They're subtopics, and that's important for you to understand in English. In your language, I don't know, but in my language, it's okay. All right, so I'm going to go, and the topic is spelling bees. Here we go. You know, I don't remember being in a spelling bee per se, but I do remember when I was in the second grade, the teacher asked, can, she was asking, can you spell dachshund, the dog? Dachshund. And so people were getting it wrong. And then she said, can anyone spell Dachshund? And I raised my hand and I spelled it. And she said, Katie, that is so very good. That's a very difficult word. Well, I was so happy that I knew how to spell that word. Ready? You're going to respond a time you felt happy in school. Um, commenting, oh, Katie, that's a funny story, or, oh, Katie, I understand, or, um, and then maybe a connection with how you felt in school, or a spelling bee that you participated in, um, or the news that you saw. There's a lot of ways you can respond. Are you ready? Great. Now, something you might find interesting is I do not ask a question at the end when I finish speaking. A lot of times when you're learning English, it's response, 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 question, question, answer, question, 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 question. Not necessary. And that's one of the key points that I'm teaching you also. You do not have to ask a question. When you finish, the other person starts speaking and picks it up automatically. All right, I'll go again. So listen, catch one thing, and then respond. You know, I often go to the United States for voiceover training, for narration training. And one time I went to San Francisco and the hotel that I stayed in had a musical playing called the 25th Annual Putnam Spelling Bee. And I checked on YouTube and you can find the music for that musical. So it's even been turned into a musical. You know, I think most schools have some kind of spelling contests. And like I said, there's always spelling tests. Can you hear Binky? Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he wants to be in a spelling bee, spelling cat. All right. Listen, have a good one. Thank you. And practice. Use this video. This is the time to practice your conversations, not when you're in a conversation. All right. Yay!